This is the most mysterious medical procedure I perform, and that's saying a lot as an anesthesiologist, where I uncover the subconscious of patients every day. It's the stellate ganglion block, and I'm going to show you on a live patient with my ultrasound what that looks like in a patient suffering with PTSD. As a quick summary, the stellate ganglion is a bundle of nerves in your neck that controls your fight flight response. You can watch this video to learn more about the science behind how it raises your heart rate, your blood pressure, makes your pupils dilate, your palms get sweaty when you're responding to threats or triggers, like in PTSD flashbacks, hyperarousal, panic attacks, and other conditions. When we numb these nerves the way that your dentist numbs your teeth with Novocaine, we can quiet your fight-flight response, called your sympathetic nervous system. It doesn't work for everybody, but for patients with a wound up central nervous system like those suffering with PTSD, it can uncouple the effects of past traumas on our central nervous system and can provide profound relief from anxiety, irritability or angry outbursts, difficulty concentrating, sleep disturbances, feeling distant or cut off, emotionally numb or even with difficulty concentrating. So let's see the science in action with a real patient. And remember, this patient received no sedation for any of this. They were wide awake. You'll hear their experience at the end. And as part of their protocol with me, they received IV ketamine, but that came after the nerve block. And if you're interested in watching a patient's live IV ketamine infusion, check out the video linked below. I first explained to patients what to expect after the block, including a droopy eyelid, hoarse voice or a lump in the throat, maybe some weakness or numbness in the arm, some redness in the eye. Once I've answered all the patient's questions, we then have to connect an IV. We need the IV in case we need to give any medication for the heart rate or blood pressure, which can change with the stellate ganglion block. We then slowly bring the patient into position, and then I need to start connecting the monitor so we can monitor the heart rate and blood pressure. And then I open up my sterile equipment here. You can see the gloves first. Then I'm gonna open up the sterile ultrasound gel and then a cover for the ultrasound probe. We put the gel on the ultrasound probe so we can image the neck and all of its structures. Now I'm going to ask the patient to tilt his head back and turn it away from me for the optimal positioning for the block. I'm cleaning the skin here with the antiseptic solution. And now I'm going to put on my sterile gloves. They're kind of a tight fit. I'm gonna now open up the ultrasound gel and put a little bit of the gel on his neck, but not too much. Now I'm going to cover the ultrasound probe with that sterile dressing, and we're gonna start scanning the anatomy. I first want to identify the C6 anterior process. I'm looking at the carotid artery on the left, the internal jugular vein right next to it, some really big vessels. Once I've identified the C6 anterior tubercle, now I'm gonna scan just below it, and this is where I'm going to block the stellate ganglion, right above the longus coli muscle. Because there are so many large vessels and small vessels in the area, I need to use the color Doppler mode to identify these vascular structures so that I don't accidentally puncture them with the nerve block needle. Once I've identified the trajectory of the needle for the block, now I'm going to clean the skin again and thoroughly numb the skin with a 30 gauge needle. That's like a pediatric baby needle, not because the patient's a baby, but because it's a lot more comfortable to numb the skin with a small needle first and then insert the bigger block needle. This way the patient can be awake without sedation and not be too uncomfortable. You can actually observe the needle slowly making its way towards the longus coli muscle where that stellate ganglion lives. And my assistant here is helping slowly inject some saline along the way to spread open the tissue planes. Now it can't be too much volume of saline because that's going to be uncomfortable in an awake patient. So we do small little half CC pushes. And once we've identified the right spot, now we're going to switch to ropivacaine, making sure that we're not near a vessel. You can actually see my assistant pulling back on the syringe to aspirate to make sure we're not in the blood vessel. In addition to using the Doppler on the ultrasound, we can minimize our chances of inadvertently injecting in a vessel. And now we're going to slowly start injecting ropivacaine. If you look closely, you can see the tissue expanding around that white star-shaped structure. That's where the name stellate comes from, from Latin, meaning star, and we call this the halo effect because the ropivacaine is dark on ultrasound, so you can see it spreading around the white stellate ganglion, a black circle around that white structure looks like a halo. 
We save photographs of the ultrasound images so we can show our patients after we're done so we can answer their questions about the procedure. You can see I'm actually speaking with the patient because I wanna make sure that we're verbalizing together, not too much, but so that they're not in pain and so that we're minimizing the risk of any side effects, such as nerve damage from poking a nerve in the wrong place. If they're awake, they can tell me what they're feeling so we can minimize that risk. When we do use sedation, we don't wanna to give too much because if a patient is fully asleep and I'm doing this procedure and a nerve gets pinched, that can lead to a long-term nerve irritation or nerve damage. Once I'm done at the C6 level, I then move up to the C4 level and I begin the same procedure again, okay. cleaning off the skin, numbing the skin with that 30 gauge lidocaine needle, and then beginning to advance the block needle, making sure we're avoiding the blood vessels and other nerves towards the longus coli muscle. This is where the term dual sympathetic reset comes from because we're blocking these nerves at two different levels in the neck, at the cervical six level and the cervical four. At the C4 level, the nerves are shallower and you can really see my needle well here. You can see where it's penetrating through the different muscular layers, avoiding the blood vessels. And now you can slowly see the distortion as the ropivacaine is surrounding the bundle of nerves to circumscribe them with that halo effect again. Once we're done, I remove the needle, I clean off the skin again and remove that goop. Now I wanna start assessing for early signs of that sympathetic nervous system being shut off, like with the droopy eyelid. We can already see the droopy eyelid from the successful SGB. We're gonna put some band-aids on and continue to monitor him to see how the symptoms progress. My left hand feels much warmer than the right hand. 34. 35.9. My eyes are. <laughs> I'm feeling uh, pretty relaxed and calm. I was having a sweet nap here. I didn't get any sedations. It was not painful. I was uh, feeling a little bit pressure on the neck itself, uh, but that was it. It was all good. Feeling pretty re relaxed. So we already did one procedure on the right side. I've already seen some um, relief and uh, some effect on it in my life in terms of sleep and being less hyper, hyper vigilant for the past couple of days. I actually had a very good sleep last night after such a long time because uh, due to the PTSD symptoms and anxiety, I was having like uh, not high quality sleeps. I was waking up several times at night and having nightmares, etc. But Last night I had a really good sleep after a long time that I really felt rested. If you or a loved one is struggling with PTSD, anxiety, or depression, please do your research and talk to your doctor about these powerful therapies like the SGB or IV ketamine that can help uncover your inner healing capacity to hopefully reduce your reliance on medications. They tend to have fewer side effects than taking oral medications every day for the rest of your life, but like any therapeutic, they still have risks, and you should thoroughly interview the center that you're interested in getting your care from. And you should check out my videos linked below and check out the website for my clinic in San Francisco to look out for the red flags of shady or unscrupulous clinics. And remember that you have more power over your health than you've probably ever been told.